The bombshell testimony in the January 6th hearing, the committee zeroing in on former President Trump's pressure campaign on his vice president, Mike Pence, to block the certification of the election. Pence's former legal counsel and former federal judge testified on Trump's plan to overturn the election results that even the architect of the strategy admitted had no legal weight and would certainly cause chaos in Washington and in the streets across the country. So let's bring in ABC News contributors, former Democratic mayor of Baltimore, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, and former Trump administration official, uh, Sarah Isger, for more. Uh, thanks for joining us. Sarah, l let's begin with you. How does this testimony from Pence's own legal counsel and a conservative federal judge who was once on the short list to be a Supreme Court nominee play with conservatives? Do you think this has changed any conservative mind? Well, politically, I don't think these hearings are intended to really change the landscape heading into, for instance, the midterm elections. But what I think was so important about this, we've heard from Trump officials throughout these hearings, of course, but this was not about the violence at the Capitol, about whether Donald Trump incited protesters to storm the Capitol. This was about whether a sitting U.S. president tried to ignore the results of an American election and hold on to power regardless. In some ways, a far more dangerous threat to our system of self-government, a far more existential crisis to the United States. When we think of January 6, I actually think we shouldn't think of violence at the Capitol. We should think of that moment because that's the moment that can repeat, that can be uh, erode those democratic norms. And so I think that uh, uh, that's the part that conservatives are needing to listen to, whether they will or not. I don't think there's people tuning into this hearing that weren't already had their minds made up either way. Uh, Mayor, we've seen some rare praise from Democrats uh, for former Vice, uh, Vice President Mike Pence. His actions on January 6th as laid out uh, in the committee hearing, refusing to block the certification, uh, refusing to leave the Capitol, not wanting to see the world see that picture, and eventually completing his constitutional duty. How significant do you think that is? I think it's extremely significant. And as uh, I, I think about the fact that when you take a look at the uh, the players in this situation, um, at the same time, I feel like you won't find a lot of profiles in courage. I hope that uh, history reflects on um, his lawyer and his advisor. I think it's Greg Jacobs and um, Michael Ludig. I hope history reflects them as true profiles and courage that they gave uh, the vice president the right advice and that the vice president took that advice and did what he needed to do under uh, extreme pressure and extreme duress. Uh, I'm grateful uh, that the vice president did that. And now I will say I'm not grateful for a whole lot else, uh, but he did do what he needed to do on that day. And it is uh, very, very significant um, because a lot of us uh, say what we would do uh, when we are under pressure. We say what we would, would do when we have to put up or shut up. Uh, Pence was in that hot seat. He was in, uh, he was under fire and he did it. Uh, and I think uh, we need to take this as an extreme version of a SWOT analysis. We got to see in real time the strength, the weaknesses, uh, hopefully some opportunities and the threats to our democracy by what happened on January 6th. And, and I'm praying that we learn these lessons and make sure something like this never happens again. Yeah, country over party for sure under the threat of violence that day for, for the vice president. Sarah, despite so many ca calling his actions heroic, Pence has kind of avoided embracing that role, largely staying quiet about January 6th and Trump's false claims that the election was stolen. I'm gonna take a stab here and say this is political because he's got aspirations, right? Look, Vice President Pence has talked about this. He certainly talked about it on January 6th. He's talked about it since then in front of conservative audience. He spoke to the Federalist Society and said he had no constitutional authority to do otherwise. He did his duty as the founders would have seen it, that he had no ability to overturn the will of the American people. But of course, Mike Pence also appears very much focused on a 2024 presidential run himself. He has visited Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina three times apiece. He was in a, even in Ohio yesterday, uh, helping some of those Republican midterm candidates. He wants to draw a distinction between himself and Donald Trump, but he also doesn't feel the need to antagonize Trump supporters who maybe don't want to see piling on the president either. All right, Sarah Isger and Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, thank you both so much for taking the time. We really do appreciate it.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.